Hello there, and welcome to another video from Change Tips and Tools. So, I received a request from one of our listeners, Nick, who wanted to know if I could build a bingo game in Excel 365, which is based on UK bingo rules. And he asked this question because he has fond memories of his dad, Ivan, trying to do this in a much, much older version of Excel. And I couldn't resist this challenge. And yes, Nick, I had a lot of fun creating this and even more fun playing bingo with my family at home. So I'm gonna show you all how I did this by creating a four bingo ticket strip version. So here are the random tickets that have been uh, created. And if I look at print preview, you can see the tickets are there, all randomly generated. And then I can be the bingo caller, caller and call the numbers 4 and 747. And these are all randomly generated. Stairway to heaven, 67, and so on. Now on this version, we have eight tickets uh, and uh, a full set of instructions of how to play this game. And you can find this version on the Change Tips and Tools Patreon. And the link can be found in the description. So let's figure out how to play bingo in Excel. First, let's look at the challenge. Nick Buckingham sent me the following challenge to create a UK bingo game within Excel. Now, Nick provided this picture of a UK bingo ticket, or should I say, this is a bingo strip, and our bingo strip contains six tickets in that strip. And I want to create four of these, four strips for four players. Now, when you look at the bingo ticket, each ticket has three rows and it has nine columns. And when you look at the, the rows, they contain five numbers in each row on that ticket. And the column has no more than two numbers per column. To add an even more, uh, another complication is that each ticket has a random pattern. And what I mean by that, it has spaces randomly placed, it's never the same. So I've got random spaces on each ticket. And then you take the fact that if you go through the columns, so all these bingo strips must contain all the numbers one to 90 with no duplicates. So column one should contain the numbers one to nine, randomly placed, no duplicates. Column two should contain the numbers 10 to 19. Column three should contain the numbers 20 to 29 and so on. As you go through to column four, five, six, seven, eight, and then finally column nine, which contains the numbers 80 to 90. So, in summary for UK bingo, each bingo strip in a six ticket series must contain all the numbers for that series without any duplicates, i.e. six tickets contain all the numbers one to 90. And again, just to repeat, column one should contain the numbers one to nine, column two should contain the numbers 10 to 19, etc. And no column or row should have a duplicate. Hmm. How the hell am I gonna do this? Well, Nick, when sending me the picture of this UK bingo ticket as an example, gave me the answer. It's all about giving the illusion of creating random patterns. I know the patterns on this ticket work. 
to meet the rules that Nick has laid out for UK Bingo. Calling out the numbers randomly doesn't worry me, that's easy enough, but this is about creating those patterns. So if I take um, the bingo ticket that Nick gave me and I turn, I take all those numbers and they become a one. So I'm going binary here, so all the blanks become zeros. So where there's a one, I'll put a number, where there's a zero, I'll leave it bank. And I know that this pattern works, so all I've got to do is take that pattern and then create copies of that pattern, just mix it up, like so, to give the illusion of a random pat pattern per ticket. I think I've got this. In this video series, we will use multiple functions, the sequence function, the find, is error sort by and multiple random functions with a sprinkle of visual basic magic. So without further ado, let's do this. So here I have an Excel file and I've called it Ivan's Bingo How To in honor of Nick's dad, Ivan and I've created five tabs. So I've got the bingo tickets tab. So this is where we'll hold the actual tickets that we print that are randomly generated, those strips, those bingo strips. We've then got the bingo call tab, which is where we will, um, as the hostess with the mostess, call out the numbers with the phrases. We've then got the bingo call support tab, so this is where all the numbers are and their phrases, the associated phrases. So I've got these off a popular UK bingo site. Um, so 1 to 90, numbers 1 to 90 with their phrases. And then we've got the ticket numbers. So this is where the magic will happen as far as creating um, those random numbers for the tickets. But first, we start with the combinations. So here's a copy of the ticket that, that Ivan's son Nick sent me. Um, so this is the ticket with the combinations. And as I said, this is where the answer lies. So you, as you can see, we've got the numbers, I then got a space. So I've got six tickets here, three rows per ticket and nine columns. So I just need to create or give the illusion of a randomly generated pattern on multiple ticket combinations or ticket strip combinations. So first of all, um, I'm going to need the, the combination. So I'm going to put um, comb hash there. So those will be my different types of combinations. I'm then going to want the row. So that's referenced the different rows. So one, two, three, all the way down to 18 down here. So there's 18 rows in total in a strip. I then want some way of creating that combination yeah um and then i'm going to i've got nine columns so i want reference the nine columns where i want a one for each of these numbers and then a zero for the space so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do uh here i'm going to do equals uh, sequence and I'm going to do 18 rows just get myself 18 rows there so there are my 18 rows like so and then all I'm going to do is go shift control down control copy and shift control V just to get rid of the formula so I've now got the numbers there and then I'll, I'll across the top so those are my rows I now want the columns across the top so again, I'm going to use the sequence number. So I'm going to do equals sequence. I don't want the rows. I want columns this night, this time, and I want nine. So I'm going to do nine for columns and then close the bracket. And there are my nine columns. So what I want is I want um, so a one there because there's a number there a one there and so on and I want to replicate this pattern for all these so if I think about it so column one two three is blank four five is blank 
six, seven and eight are blank. So seven and eight, and then nine isn't. So that's where all my zeros are. So if I do something like and use the find function, so the find function finds text within a text. If I do equals find, so I'm going to find this text here. I'm going to do F4 to make it um, an absolute reference and do hash. So it goes right across the top there. And I'm going to find it within here, C3. And I'm going to close the bracket. Let's see what that gives us. So you'll notice where um, I, it can't find a number. It's giving me an error. And then it's saying where it's found it in that text there. So three's position one, five, position two. So really where I've got errors, I want that to be a one. And where I don't have an error in this find, I want it to be a zero. So let's use the if and the is error function here together. So if I then amend this formula and do if, so if that formula there is error, so we wrap it in that is error. So if it if it is an error, i.e. true, I'm going to do return comma return a one. If it is false then return a zero and then if i close that bracket let's see what that does for me and hit return right so now i've got ones there where i've got numbers there you can see the zero in column three then i've got a one in column four where there's a number and then i've got a zero a one two zeros for the blanks and then a number then one there so let's do the second row in this ticket here. So this time we've got one, two, so con two is blank. So do a two, three, four is blank, five, six, seven, then eight and nine are blank. Eight and nine. And hit return. Then all I've got to do is just copy that formula down to there. Let's put the combinations for all of these rows here. In fact, let's do, do one more. So let's do this one here. So we've got, um, so one and two are blank, three, four, and then five and six, five and six. And if I do that and then copy that formula down, and again, there we go. So that works. So, let me do the rest for all these tickets here. And there you go. So we've now got the patterns for all of these tickets in ones and zeros. So all I've got to do then, if we take each three rows representing a ticket within the strip, so that one's going to be ticket one, sorry, and this one's going to be ticket two, it's going to be three, four, Five, I've got one, two, three, four, five, and then we do six, yeah. So these represent each of these ticket one, two, three, four, five, six. All I've got to do now is mix them up. So if I take this one here and we, we put them here, yeah. So if I say, let's take this, the bottom one, and let's reverse it over here. So if I do control copy, and I put six there. So now we've got this combination at the top. So let's do that for the rest of them. So let's take five. Let's paste them in. I'm just copying them and pasting them. Uh, that example out of the way. Yeah. And then the last one there, control copy. Boom. So there we've got now is we've got them mixed up 
the other way around. So all I've got to do then is take that, just do Control X to cut it, and let's paste it there and do Control V. And then all I'm going to do is take this 1 to 18 here and do Control Copy, and then just paste it there, Control V. So we've got now the, the new order there, so 1 to 18. Okay. Now all I'm going to do for this is just mix it around again. So let's take uh, let's take this one and put it at the top. Yeah. So just put it there. Do Control V. And all I'm doing is just mixing them up. Or you could even say take two here, and you could say right. Well, let's take the top this top row. Yeah. Do control copy, put that there, and you can mix them up within the tickets to take the bottom one. Control copy, and let's put that there in the middle instead of the bottom, and then take the middle one and just mix them around. Yeah, and just keep doing that, mixing them up. And then once you've done that, is you then name these all as a combination. So if I take this one and make it one all the way down, that's that one combination, make this one two, copy that all the way down, and so on. So let me just create the ticket combinations. I'm going to create 12 versions of this, yes, yeah? so 12 ticket ver combination. So let me just do that. And there you go. So I now have 12 different combinations. And all I've done is just, as, as I've shown you, just mix them up like so. So I've now got the 12 combinations. The next thing, thing for me to do is give these tickets a a named range so and the way that we're going to do that is if I take this first one just take the first block to 18 sequence one here and in the name box here I'm just going to click that I'm going to call it tick comb one and hit return so that's my first named range yeah and then I'm going to take the next one, take that down to 18, and this one will be called Tick Com. So that's T I C K uppercase C O M B 2. So let me just go down now, selecting all these and giving them the, the appropriate name range for each of these. Boom. And there you go. Now, so there we have all our ticket combinations. So let's uh, jump to the ticket numbers tab. And let's think about what we need to do. So the first thing is we know we've got nine columns. So if I go column one let's just copy that as a sequence there so we get to nine so we've got nine columns so we know in the first column we've got to have numbers going from one to nine so again i'm just going to use sequence i'm going to do equals Se sequence so i want nine rows in column one in column two, I want uh, numbers uh, 10 to 19, so I'm going to do equals sequence. Um, and I want, so there's going to be 10 numbers here. And then I'm going to start 
at number 10. Have I calculated that right? Yes, I have. So 10 numbers, 10 to 19. So let's do the same for column three. So that's going to equal sequence. So I want 10 rows, and this time, the only columns I'm going to start at 20 and hit return. Yeah. So let me do the same to uh, up to column um, up to column eight. Let's do that. Let's put those in there. And there you go. So that's up to column eight. Let's do um, uh, column nine, which is going to be slightly different. So I'm going to do equals sequence. And this time I want um, 11 rows in this one. No columns again. And I'm going to start at uh, 80, the number 80. And hit return. Because I need that to go to 80 uh, to 90 there. So these are my numbers. Now, as far as, again, the columns here, if I just take this and do control copy, and let's put that there, control V, is I need to, um, and just press escape there on the copy, I need to, get this column here, but I want it to sort it randomly. So we can do equals sort by function. Now the array is going to be um, this here, and let's just do um, function f4, because I'm going to make it, let's make it absolute, I'm going to do Ash. So I select the whole column. Then as far as the the sort bit is I'm going to do um rand array. Then as far as the rand array, the rows, I'm going to use it by the count of rows in this array. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the rows function, open bracket, and again the array is going to be this here. I'm going to do F4 to make that absolute, and then I'm going to do hash to include that spill range. Then I'm going to close the bracket on the rows, close the bracket on the rand uh, array, and then I'm going to close the bracket on the sort boy. And let's see what that does for us. So what you can see there, it sorted those numbers randomly in that column. So let's do the same for um, column two. So let's do that again. So if I just look at what that's done, so we get the sort by, so we can the sort by, but let's look at what this rows function is doing for us. It's giving me a number. And all I'm saying is a number of rows in the rand array. So if I just do um, equals rows and select this and do hash, let's see what that gives us. So it gives me a count of nine. Now you'll see this is recalculating. So each time, um, Excel calculates it's going to regenerate, regenerate uh, a new set of numbers here and we want to stop that and I'll show you how in a minute so let me just then delete that and these numbers change again so let's do the same here so I'm going to do equals sort by so my array is going to be column 2 so I'm going to do that I'm going to do F4 and do hash and then my, my, my array is going to be random. So rand array, I'm going to do for the rows argument, I'm going to do rows function, open that bracket again, refer to that column C, make it F4 to make it absolute and do hash. So I'm counting the rows in that. Close the bracket on the rows, close the bracket on the random array, and then close it on the sort by, and hit 
return. And I've now got these numbers randomly sorted again. And each time I, if I do F9, you'll notice that those numbers are just moving around. So let me do the rest and repeat that for all these columns. And there you go. Now again, if I if I keep pressing F9 here, it's recalculating. So what I'm going to do is to switch that off. Is I'm going to go to File, Options, and on Formulas, I'm going to make it Manual here and click OK. Which means now each time I do something here, so if I do again equals uh, rows. Let's do that, hash, close the bracket, hit return. It calculates as I hit enter here, but you'll notice that this hasn't recalculated. For it to recalculate, if I press F9, it then recalculates, yeah? Wonderful, so let me just delete that there. So now, um, for this, I want to create an order here so I want to be able to look at these numbers and pick them up from the column for my tickets so I'm going to create an order column and again it's going to do um, equals so it goes up to 11 total here so I'm going to do sequence 11 hit return there we go and then at the top here I'm just going to do shift control down to select a door i'm going to do control copy shift control v just to paste it as value so i get rid of the formula so now i've got combination here of randomly generated numbers based on 50 to 59 so in column six you can see that they've been mixed up randomly and that changes each time I recalculate, as you can see. Wonderful. So that's where I'm going to end this video. And in the next video, we will finish the build out of all the ticket number calculations ready to drive our bingo strips. Thank you for watching. And please remember to click that like, subscribe, and smash that notifications button for future content. And as always, I wish you an absolutely wonderful day wherever you are in the world. Please take care, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video from Change Tips and Tools. Bye-bye now.